Hi and welcome back to VMware Cloud Director 101 Core Concepts. I'm Guy. I'm Julian. And today we're going to talk about vRealize Orchestrator. Now vRealize Orchestrator is a component which comes with vCloud Director. It um, tends to be one of those components that's little known, but it's actually extremely powerful. And we felt it's worthwhile having a session just to walk through some of the core capabilities of vRealize Orchestrator. So Julian, please explain to me the details of the Realize Orchestrator. What, what does it do? How does it do it? What are some of the functions that our, our service providers could use it for? Well, you're right, it's been around in the VMware portfolio for a while. You get it with vCloud Director. We've been getting it with vSphere for years. It's always been there. If you've bought vSphere, you've had that tool. Right. Uh, generally overlooked, but it's a hidden gem for sure. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's an orchestrator. It lets you automate processes primarily in the VMware uh, platform, but also externally. So if you want to automate highly repeatable processes that you've got for operations purposes, or you want to create inbound or outbound integrations into the VMware platform, orchestrators the tool to use. Okay. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of architecture, if I may. Yeah, go for it. Let's start here. So deploying VRO, it's appliance-based, so you provision an appliance, you can build it into a cluster, and we have guidance online for how to do that. But within that, you have your repository of workflows. So these are the units that customers build or VMware create for you. And there are various other components. I, I won't go into too much detail. And then down below that, we have our plugins. So this is how we extend the capability of VRO to talk to something like vCloud Director or NSX. If you want to talk to something like uh, VCD, uh, you use the vCloud Director plugin. Mm -hmm. And that, very simply, talks to the API of VCD. Anyhow, you have vSphere, you have NSX. Sometimes you have to install a plugin, but sometimes we bundle it with the appliance. Just take a look, and if it's missing, download it and install it. It's a very easy task. Right. And then for everything else, if the plugin is missing, or VMware or the vendor of the tool don't provide a plugin, you also have the Great. rest, exactly. Yeah. Well, you can build a plugin, but we like to save people time, you don't necessarily have to do it. So we have a sort of a generic REST API plugin. So in other words, if you're trying to interact with something that there isn't a plugin for, but the API documentation is good enough, why not build some calls around it? Sure. So the view to the customer, so the service provider, whoever's building the workflow, will see a process chain effectively. You start, there'll be some steps, uh, there'll be some uh, decisions, that sort of thing. So a, a process flow. Mm -hmm. And then in the end, you'll um, exit, or perhaps you'll, you'll fail. And so that's the graphical the representation they see in the VR or UI. Exactly. Right. And that's now gone to HTML5. So previously we used the Java-based client, we've updated, we've now got a HTML5 one, and that's the one to adopt going forward. Right. So um, when you look at the workflow, the idea is that it should generally, visibly, reflect your process. So whatever the process is, the sequence of events you follow, it should roughly look like that. Yes, you can nest, so one parent workflow can call sub-workflows, but that's yep. for another discussion. Okay. So once you have these workflows built, the point is you can interact with an external system. So it could be something like go into the Cloud Director and create a new org for onboarding a customer. So creating the whole process of onboarding a customer to make them ready to work you can automate that from end to end. Right. When you get a plugin in VRO, you also get a, a library. So we bundle some workflows in there. So imagine this is your library tree. You'll have a vCloud Director section. Underneath that, you'll have things like vApp mm -hmm. and network. So they're, they're categorized into the different functions. So there'll be something like create a new network in vCloud Director. And remember, this is on top of any other automation in place. So as you know, in vCloud Director, if you create a routed network, Actually, it's NSX doing the work. Yeah, so the VCD yeah. tells NSX to do it. NSX goes into vSphere and automates the port group and configuration for that. Yeah. Um, but if there's something missing or you don't like the way the workflow is missing, just create your own. Yes, you require some skills. It's um, it's it's sort of halfway be between development and scripting. It's a halfway house. So it's process driven, of course. You're not going to write reams of code in JavaScript. Um, generally speaking, there is a, an existing action or workflow in the library you can use to build your process. If there isn't, maybe you'll have to create a few components. And then once you've done that, you can execute the workflows either directly or, more likely, you're going to create um, a service tile up here in yeah. VCD. And you're going to execute that workflow from the portal. 
So that, that workflow could be something for like operationalizing. I mentioned customer onboarding. It could be something simple like create a new Org VDC for a customer for some new resources. So you could have a service tile in VCD, add new Org VDC. There might be some input. You might say to the engineer, I'd like you to tell me how big this is, um, what type of allocation model you're using, any, any parameters you choose. Build that into the workflow. It gets executed. And then within VRO, the VCD plugin is used, thanks to the library components, to go and build that service for you. Now, what if you also have, outside of this picture, a big repository of existing scripts? Because there are other orchestration tools, there are other automation tools. Um, VRO based, is based on JavaScript, but it could be things like PowerShell and so on. Yeah. So the idea is don't throw that away. Make use of that investment. So VRO is not a replacement for all your automation. It's complementary. Obviously, it works very well with the VMware stack, so it's, it's ideal for that. So if you wanted to automate something in vSphere or, or vCD, yes, there are other tools available, but you might find it's easier to do it in VRO, so make it part of your process. So what we could say is I have a script in here which does something in the infrastructure. Maybe it's something like uh, configure an antivirus server now that the agent's deployed in, in the vCloud director-based VM. Sure. I've done the coding, so why would I redo it in VRO? Mm -hmm. I wouldn't. So more likely, I'm going to create a generic workflow, which is a PowerShell caller. And what that will do is every time you um, execute it, we'll make reference to the script you want to call. So in the service library, we say we want to execute the uh, um, update AV server configuration. It goes to VRO, it takes the input parameters, it knows which script to execute on your Windows scripting host, and then it just sends the parameters and executes it for you. Is this PowerShell uh, module then a generic execution module for all PowerShell environments in this instance? Yes. So within VRO, again, it's all plugin based. We yeah. know about PowerShell because we have a plugin for it. And obviously, it's a Linux based appliance, so we don't execute locally. What we do is we designate an execution host, so your existing automation server, and we say, here's the path to your PowerShell script, here are some parameters, go and execute it. Right. So in that case, one of the things you might want to do, so this base this execution, this script would be perhaps one of these processes here. Um, this script goes off and does something um, and then comes back and feel, fills back up the tree. Um, what about logging and the importance of kind of monitoring the execution of that? So uh, within VRO, there is any house and logging. So by default, executions are locked. You can up the detail. Mm. So you can have um, quite detailed debug logs. You can also, in your coding, actually yeah. specify log outputs. Say, I have created this object. It was a success. Here is the IP address I've been allocated, and pump that into a log and review it. You could even set it up to send these messages somewhere else. It could even be SMTP traps if you wanted to capture it in a monitoring tool. Yeah. Very flexible, so it can fit your existing framework for monitoring and auditing. In terms of the execution runs, every time a workflow runs, you get this runflow token, we call it. It shows you the execution, the date and time, the inputs that were provided. And if it's coming from vCloud Director, you also see metadata for the customer requesting it and the user. Okay. So what happens if I have a workflow that essentially has to stop while another system goes and does something? You, know, you can do a wait command, but that's not always appropriate. You're actually going to have to wait for something to come back before you continue executing that, that uh, request. How would you handle that, particularly for something like, I guess, um, raising a help desk ticket or monitoring the status of a help desk ticket? So mm -hmm. I raise a ticket, I've got a 15 minute window to acknowledge the ticket. You know, the system needs to know it's being acknowledged so it can feed back that it's being acknowledged. Yes, so so far we've been talking about customer facing automation. The service library is anything as a service. Here's some automation I bought, show it to the customer. Mm -hmm. Of course, in the back end, there are some things that the service provider will automate behind the scenes. So common examples are raising tickets, and also things like uh, what if they have ITSM, a CMDB. Mm -hmm. When a customer in vCloud Director requests a new VM, I need to put a CI entry into yeah. the CMDB. Yeah. So that's a back-end operation. Uh, so we could have something like this. That's my CMDB. I guess this is going to be quite a common one, right? Very common. Yeah. And things like creating DNS records. And don't forget the cleanup at the end. If I delete a VM, yeah. I've got cleanup yeah. to do. Yeah, exactly. All has to happen. Yeah. Now, we don't give the customer control over that because that's our business, that's our problem as a service provider. So we have something called uh, lifecycle extensibility. So those actions within vCloud Director, the lifecycle of an object, create VM, customize, power on, power off, delete, all mm -hmm. the way through, and anything else you can think of. For example, attaching a new disk, that's an action. Sure. vCloud Director will notify VRO indirectly via RabbitMQ. 
So what happens is, if I just quickly draw on that component, our message queue bus. Yep. For those wondering why we deploy it. No, you know. Yep. <laughs> BCD tells the RabbitMQ, drops a message into queue saying, I've just done this. I've just received this request. This is what's happening. And it has two modes of operation. Notification, just to let you know I'm doing this, by the way. And blocking task, here's the information you need. I'm going to wait until you do it. I'm not going to progress. Right. Okay. So let's say that creating a new VM was a blocking task in this case. And you can base it on certain conditions, uh, which is useful for approval. Um, blocking tasks. So the customer enters the details to create the VM, executes, and at the bottom in the portal they see the, um, the execution task running. It's going to sit there. It's not going to progress until the message is picked up by, v -Cloud Direct, uh, by VRO, sorry, mm -hmm. pulled out of the queue. The workflow, and we provide a generic workflow to handle this, you can download it from code.vmware.com, inspects the metadata for the request, and then it does something. And it's down to you what it does. Let's say it's approval. Someone's asking for a very large SAP HANA VM, something like that. Yeah, approval um, perfect. People are going to have to take a look at this. So we'll, we'll tie this into an approval engine. Perhaps we've got a tool, and it's an API call we make. And the workflow continues to run until the approval is given or rejected. Right. Now, back to this diagram. If we succeed, execution continues in vCloud Director. So we can say that, yes, we've talked to the approval engine, and it's come back, yes, so we'll just terminate the workflow successfully. Now the blocking task can carry on. So yes, I've finished my task in VRO, return to executing, and now the VM gets provisioned in vSphere. If, however, the approval engine rejects the request, we can configure the workflow such that it fails. So we end up with the blocking task failing. So VRO says this workflow failed to execute. Mm -hmm. The blocking task fails, and in turn, vCloud Director sees a failure in the process and doesn't continue. So the request for the new VM fails as well. Would the blocking task potentially be a success? I receive something back, but I, it's a failure message coming back or a denied message coming back. So kick off another process, maybe send them an email saying, sorry, your request for that huge SAP HANA database was rejected. <laughs> so those sorts of uh, challenges we deal with in VRO because this is where the clever stuff is. This yeah. is where we can put our logic, and that can be business logic. It doesn't have to relate to the product at all. All the cloud director is interested in is in, did you succeed or did you fail? What's the final word on sure. that? Okay. Um, if you do have a failure, you can put a custom um, error code in. So in the portal, when you look at the detail as a customer, why did this process fail? We can put a little custom string in there saying, um, your approval is rejected. Please contact this email address. Got it. OK. Good. So um, and I guess, does when you look at things like, so this is calling the VCD API, which VCD has a number of APIs. Um, is this a similar sort of thing, or uh, just help me in my knowledge here, the Terraform and Ansible support that VCD has now as Terraform provider? Is this something that exists on the, on the VCD side, or is this something that VRO utilizes as well? That is all on the VCD side. Right, okay. You don't need to worry about VRO. So VRO is just another API and an API consumer. Right. So of course, within vCloud Director, we have a very rich API. So things like Terraform, Ansible, any tool you can think of, including VRO itself, talks to the vCloud Director API. You don't have to um, customize the vCloud Director platform in any special way. It's ready to go the moment you deploy it. So if you're going to do an API-only platform where there is no UI in vCloud Director and you choose to block that and just let customers consume through automation, you just point them to the API. Right. But if you wanted to then create, say we are using Terraform to create a, I know, an org VDC of a certain construct, um, and if I wanted to have that something I could publish to my DevOps team as a tile, um, if the DevOps team wanted to use the UI for some strange reason, mm -hmm. um, then I could actually configure the workflow here to call the Terraform API, which would then in turn orchestrate the VCD yes. API. The process can start anywhere in this picture, yeah. including your scripting host. Correct. So you can have a script that calls VRO. So VRO has its API to call this workflow to tell vCloud Director to build an OVDC which triggers a lifecycle enhancement to tell the CMDB to be updated through VRO to execute for any order you like. Mm -hmm. The process can start in VCD or VRO or somewhere else or end anywhere. Um, it's all down to you how you build it. And that extensibility is why VRO is such a powerful tool. Absolutely. Great. Well, hopefully that's given you a good idea on how VRO can be used, the type of uh, uses you can um, develop or use off the shelf with the existing uh, plugins that are there today. Uh, thank you very much, Julian. My pleasure.